I like history. But then again, I like every subject matter as long as I'm learning the parts of it that I actually find interesting. Unfortunately, a lot of the time in your life, people will decide for you what you should and shouldn't find interesting. Your middle school teacher might tell you that reading Homer's Odyssey is a waste of time because, well, what relevance does that have to the job market in 2016? And, I mean, why would you want to read books about heavy metal? You can't get a degree in heavy metal history. On the other hand, you should definitely read the history of Canada because, well, that's the history of Canada and the history of a country is always important. But the history of film? Eh, that's gonna need to go because all you can hope for with that knowledge is an arts degree and is an arts degree really going to help you? Well, as far as I'm concerned, everybody has different opinions on what's interesting and nobody should be able to stop you from pursuing those interests but yourself. With that said, let's talk about Doors Open Winnipeg. Now, like I said before, I like every subject matter as long as I'm learning parts of it that I actually find interesting. Doors Open is essentially a historical event, but it's the kind of history that I can get down with, giving me the freedom to learn and experience what I want to and not what I'm told to. What the event provides is the opportunity to explore buildings and tours that may not be accessible the rest of the year. This free public event celebrates Winnipeg's unique spaces, architecture, and history, showcasing more than 80 remarkable buildings and sites. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Did you know that Doors Open originated in Glasgow, Scotland in 1990 as Doors Open Days, but quickly expanded nationwide under the overall community? Yeah, I don't really care either. What I do care about is going into buildings that I normally wouldn't be able to get into, such as the Manitoba Legislative Building. Now, this building is a meeting place of the Legislative Assembly of Manitoba, or in other words, a place that some guy wearing skinny jeans, band t-shirts, and rocking an out-of-the-place bowl cut shouldn't really be hanging around. Fortunately, because of doors open Winnipeg, I was able to go hang around the Manitoba Legislative Building and really get a feel for this amazing architecture. We're talking about thousands of years of embedded history, architectural history, in our backyard. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle kind of like something straight out of the Da Vinci Code. Uh, I've been working, uh, researching intensely, obsessively, the Manitoba Legislative Building. And as I was approaching, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, it was flanked by these two giant Egyptian sphinxes. What on earth does ancient Egypt have to do with Manitoba? The bison represents something, and then you go into the next, and with the star, and then you go into the... Talk oh about my god, the architecture, amazing, the, beautiful. The Stunning. Absolutely. Look at these walls. We've been standing on marble for two hours. I'm not even tired. I'm energized. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Recommended to everybody. Come on, you folks. Get out here. It doesn't matter where you're from. Journey back to the center, back to Winnipeg to see this amazing building. Awe-inspiring. Awe-inspiring. But for real though, this building is actually really cool. I like it. Next up, we got the Royal Canadian Mint, where I clearly thought it was more important to get a shot of a loon statue instead of the actual building itself. I also got some unnecessary shots of this fountain here, but hey, they're pretty nice, huh? Anyway, I'll spare you all the boring details about this place and instead make it simple. The Royal Canadian Mint is actually the name of three different facilities that manufacture coins for Canada and other nations, and one of these facilities is obviously right here in Winnipeg. Now, the last thing you want to do in a place like this is film beyond the window where they actually make the money, because this guard will come up to you and tell you that... The last thing you want to do in a place like this is film beyond the window where we make the money. Normally, I would take this as nothing more than a friendly warning, but since his hand was only inches away from the gun at his side, I decided that there's not much else to film here and instead went outside to become a cardboard cutout penny. After that, I headed to Grand Sold Mill, which is one of those places that you always drive by but never really make the effort to actually check out. 
So I decided to actually check it out, and for whatever reason, was rather shocked to find out that it was literally nothing more than a 19th century mill. Of course, every place has its history, and I think the history of Grand Sold Mill is what makes it such a prestigious Winnipeg landmark. Not only can you learn about flour milling, Cuthbert Grant, and the fur trade, you can also go to Grant Sold Mill for various programs, displays, and services. For example, you have the opportunity to tour this replica of a water-powered flour mill built by Cuthbert Grant in 1829. Not only that, but the operation of water wheels and millstones are explained. Furthermore, the story of Cuthbert Grant, first leader of the main Let's talk about the Burton Cummings Theatre. So, the Burton Cummings Theatre has been a popular Winnipeg venue for a long time now and it's significant for many reasons. Originally known as the Walker Theatre, this place was built during 1906 and 1907 and has a long but very interesting history. Not only was it used during the 20th century for various political rallies such as the labor and women's suffrage movements, but it's also said to be haunted. <laughs> As a matter of fact, aside from being a venue for popular acts such as Rise Against, Lamb of God, and 21 Pilots, the Burton Cummings Theatre also gains a reputation from the fact that it is actually haunted. As this article states, the paranormal activities that have been experienced at the Burton Cummings Theatre are spectral applauding from empty seats. 200-pound steel doors moving by themselves, disembodied voices and whispers, doors creaking open and closed, and dogs barking at invisible material and light anomalies. Oh yeah, there's also this fairly morbid plaque at the front of the theater that memorializes the two performers, Lawrence Irving and his wife Mabel Hackney, who made their last appearances on the stage of this theater in 1914 before drowning in the St. Lawrence River along with 1,024 others after two boats collided and sunk. Many people seem to think that it is these two performers who continue to haunt the Burton Cummings Theater today, but who can ever really know? <laughs> Now, before I talk about the next and final place I went to that day, let me talk about the man that approached me only seconds before I went to that next and final place. He literally told me that I had a nice facial structure and asked if he could get a portrait of me. Being an unusually weird and random situation, I obviously said of course, and he proceeded to take my picture. Here's some proof that these kinds of things actually happen to me. After that, I headed on over to the Union Station. Now, out of all the places I visited this year for Doors Open Winnipeg, I'd have to say that the Union Station has the most vivid history. Opening in 1911, the Union Station has now been an intercity railway station in Winnipeg for over a hundred years. It should come as no surprise then that this place has had its fair share of historical moments ranging from hauntings, mass immigrations, and many other things. I remember hearing one story in particular about early Asian immigrants who would be kept in the basement of Union Station upon arrival until they were registered and verified as Canadian citizens. Unfortunately, many of them died down there due to neglection, malnutrition, and the overall negative consequences that come from putting too many people in one place at once. These many deaths from the past are generally the accepted reason behind why paranormal activities continue to occur at the Union Station. And if all these stories should tell you anything, it should be that history is a very complex subject. It doesn't just need to be confined to the topics you're taught in school. If you want to learn about the milling process at Grant's Old Mill, then go ahead. Or maybe you'd rather learn about the history of the legislative's architecture. Well, if that's the case, then go ahead. Or hey, how about the hauntings at the Burton Cummings Theatre, maybe that's more up your alley. 
In all honesty though, none of these topics probably interest you very much. What is interesting is the freedom to learn about what you want without any restrictions, and if that freedom is available to you, I say you make the best of it. Doors Open is the kind of event that gives you the freedom to learn about what you want, how you want to, and that's the kind of freedom that I like. Even though I did only end up going to 5 places this year, there were nonetheless many, many more to check out. With this said, I hope you were able to find the slightest bit of enjoyment in this video, even if none of these places had any significant impact on you. History doesn't always have to be boring, and maybe sometimes it can even be, dare I say it, fun. So go out and learn something, kids, something that you enjoy, because learning can be fun for everyone.